afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Boss's webinar with Overwise Dairy. Today, we are going to talk about how to simplify and automate processes across the organization using your help software. Uh, we are going to start today with webinar. Uh, it's February 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for joining today. My name is Julie Duke. And I am with Boss Solutions. Just to give you an idea of kind of what we're going to cover in this next hour on how to simplify and automate processes uh, is going to be how you can use help desk software um, across the organization to improve your processes. We'll also show you how to build drag and drop forms integrated with triggers, monitors, and routing rules uh, that will easily automate those service requests. Then at the end of the webinar, we will be answering all of your questions and give away two $50 gift cards. Today's presenters will be Bob Gruitt, Network Administrator for Overwise Dairy, and Chris Korinkowski, Support Engineer here at Boss Solutions. Just a few quick notes before we get started. Everyone will be muted during the webinar. We do want your questions, uh, so please, throughout the entire webinar, please ask your questions. If you look on your screen, there is a Q&A um, place for your questions. Please enter them in as we go along, as we do want to answer as many as possible at the end of the webinar. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and a copy of this will be sent to all registered participants. Um, at the end of the webinar, we will be sending you a short survey, very short survey, um, and we would really appreciate your feedback to give you um, an overview of Boss Solutions at a glance. We've been in IT service management for over 25 years. We've won numerous awards, including Gartner's Front Runners, uh, Gartner's Captera Top 20, and GitApp Category Leaders. We have a huge lineup of service desk on the cloud with Boss Desk. Uh, Boss Support Central, which is our on-premise solution for help desk, and also Boss 811, which is a one-call ticket management solution for the damage prevention industry. As always, we look forward to supplying you with the latest in technology, and we are super committed to excellent customer support. Today's feature presentation will now begin. Uh, with Bob Gruitt on how Overwise Dairy simplified and automated processes across the organization with Boss Desk. So now I will turn it over to Bob. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Bob Gruitt, as Julie mentioned. Um, uh, I work for Overwise Dairy, a family owned company out in Chicago's western suburbs. And today I am going to be talking about uh, electronic forms, uh, ticket creation, uh, the ticket overview from the agent's perspective, routing and monitoring rules, the ticket scheduler, and a few knowledge base highlights. During this, I'm going to be doing my best to point out things that, in my opinion, have saved uh, myself, my team, my company, uh, time and effort, helped us automate processes, basically make things uh, simpler uh, for us. Um, but before we get into that, I would like to tell you a little bit about Oberwise. Oberwise Dairy, it's a family-owned business whose roots go back to 1927, when Peter Oberwise began selling extra milk to his neighbors from a horse-drawn wagon. And yes, that is the wagon in the photo. Peter would become the co-owner of Big Woods Dairy, and in 1930 purchased the remaining interest in the company, renaming it Oberwise. In the years to follow, Overwise would grow under the leadership of second, third, and fourth generation family members. Today, Overwise is known for its premium ice cream and dairy products and its old-fashioned glass bottle home delivery service. The company continues to expand home delivery in the Midwest and on the Eastern Seaboard, and growth in the wholesale market is ongoing. 
To support these avenues, Oberweiss makes use of eight distribution centers across the Midwest, in North Carolina, and in Virginia, and employs a fleet of delivery trucks and drivers working all shifts. Additionally, Oberweiss has grown from just two stores in 1951 to a total of 45 stores today, and our retail business model has graduated from standalone ice cream and dairy stores to tri-branded locations selling ice cream, burgers, and pizza. And here you can see one of our more recent stores that's gone up. Um, when it comes to the challenges faced uh, regarding, uh, you know, any service desk product, um, there's a bunch, but these are a few of the highlights I wanted to bring up. First is diverse roles and needs. Uh, with roles including leadership, accounting, marketing, design, production, delivery, maintenance, customer service, and the 16-year-old greeting customers as they enter our stores, Oberwise manages a very diverse set of employee roles. Uh, therefore, any solution must cater to the unique needs and technical skill sets of a diverse community. We can't forget that our users range from highly technical to not technical at all. Additionally, there's our employees and locations. We manage over 1,000 individual employees spread across 50 physical locations. This includes field workers such as drivers, retail store employees, door-to-door -door sales reps, and remote workers. Again, any solution we choose must offer easy access to support teams, our knowledge base articles, and ticketing from both browsers and mobile devices. We didn't want someone's experience with our service desk to be subpar simply because they were accessing it from an iPhone instead of a PC browser. And finally, support staff limitations. Our total support staff is just 17 individuals, with only four of those being IT support. Um, so of course, any solution, it has to be intuitive, has to be intelligent, and it must allow for a high degree of ticket automation. This was very important to me in particular because previous solutions we've used involved significant ongoing administration, which typically fell to IT to manage for the entire organization. As far as what features we needed, uh, we wanted ticketing, uh, a robust knowledge base, hardware and software inventory, vendor and contract management, and reporting and scheduling. Uh, in other words, we didn't want to piecemeal together a bunch of different products. We wanted an all-in-one solution if we could get away with it. We also wanted a solution that had uh, turnkey core features. That is to say, something that was very easy to set up, but you know, down the road would offer flexibility and, and expandability to meet uh, our, our growing needs. Um, to put this into context, our previous solution it took us almost a year to set up because we had to build everything from the ground up. And at the end of it all, it was really just a ticketing solution. Boss Desk, we got up and running in under a week. Uh, I, I believe it was four days. And, and that included uh, creating all the forms, the support teams, the agents, all the rules that governed uh, ticket behavior, all the email notifications, all the, the team security, pretty much everything that we needed to, to go live with the ticketing system, it took us four or five days uh, to complete. The second week, we were filling out our knowledge base and we were scanning Active Directory and our network for uh, our inventory components. So it was a very fast turnaround. Uh, and finally, mobile support. Uh, it had to be mobile friendly. We, have, we don't just have users who work out in the field full time. We have agents, support reps, technicians who work out in the, in the field, and they might be using iPads and iPhones. We wanted them to have the same experience that people back at the main office were having. So all that said, um, I'm going to bring up uh, the Boss Desk interface here. What we're looking at here is the dashboard. This is like the, the default landing page for your technicians. They're called agents in the Boss Desk world. And this dashboard is highly customizable. I'm not going to get into that so much, but you can see at a glance that we have various widgets to show me tickets in various states, uh, tickets that are due at different times. Um, distribution of tickets across teams and individuals. And I also have, uh, I'm keeping an eye on all of my contracts coming up for expiration in the next six months. Um, but what I really want to talk about today is ticketing. And tickets always begin with forms, which are located in the service catalog. And right here, you can see that I've got a decent number of custom forms. Um, some of these are, uh, the purpose is to allow end users to request uh, support. Uh, for example, if they 
have an IT issue, they can fill out the IT support ticket. They have a website issue, they can fill out the website services ticket. If it's an employee at a store and they're having problems with a freezer, they can fill out the restaurant maintenance ticket. Um, but we're not just limited to uh, support tickets. Customer product complaints and store order product complaints, these forms have been designed to allow certain personnel internally to log customer complaints about products that have been purchased. They become tickets, they go into the official record. And we also have some electronic forms that used to be paperwork. Uh, and I have some forms in here that I use to uh, kick off requests to fellow team members, things that I used to have to send over in emails. It's just easier to do this way. For the purpose of, uh, and, and by the way, these are divided into different categories. So services and support, they're all right here. And this is the bulk of our true uh, support tickets if users have problems. For today, I have created a custom form uh, called Boss Desk Webinar Ticket, and that's what we're going to be going through. All you have to do is click on it. And um, from a high level, this should be pretty straightforward. I, I only have a handful of different field types, but you should know that forms can include, you know, single line and multi-line text, rich text fields, check boxes, drop downs, cascading drop downs. There's a whole variety of date fields and such. Um, it's very highly robust. Um, I do want to draw your attention first to this requester field up here. Because I'm an agent, uh, I have the ability to submit tickets on behalf of other users. So maybe somebody walks up to me or calls me and I just you know, want to put a ticket into the system form really quick. I can look them up in here and um, select their name. Uh, let's look up somebody else like Pavel, my manager. And uh, we can submit a ticket on his behalf. A typical end user would not see this. The tickets would simply always go in as themselves. Then we have title and description and these are required fields just because I chose to make them required. We can attach files. And then I have a few optional fields here. This is roughly uh, supposed to be like a new user request form. It's obviously not complete, but it gives you the idea. Uh, the most important aspect of this ticket that I want to circle back on later are these last four checkboxes here. These tie into what are called routing rules, which again, we'll zero in on in a little bit. But what they allow us to do is automate functions simply by checking or unchecking options. And uh, I'll go into that more later, but for now, let's just say we have a new user, his name's Herman Johnson. Maybe his manager's putting this in. And he says, Herman starts work next Monday. Uh, please set him up ASAP. Paperwork attached. Paperwork attached. And then they upload the uh, files, if there's any paperwork. Uh, name is Herman, employee, title, department. And again, we can make all these required. I just didn't uh, because I didn't want to bother filling everything out. Uh, maybe the start date is next Monday. So now we say, okay, well, Herman, he's going to be a remote employee. He's going to be a field employee. So he needs a user account and a mailbox and he needs a mobile phone, but he doesn't need a desktop laptop. He doesn't need a desk phone. So from the requester's perspective, this is all very simple, very straightforward. All they do is they fill this out, check the proper boxes and hit request. And now we are looking at the ticket from the perspective of the agent. Now, the way that I have this set up for, for this example, uh, I'm the one who requested it and I'm also the person who's assigned, but I do want to uh, jump very briefly over to this requester view. And this is what the end users would see. So if I open up the same ticket as the end user, they do see a lot of the same information, but they're also missing a lot of like the, the particulars, the category, the team, who it's assigned to. I mean, they see the agent here, but they, they don't see the, the assignment options, okay? Uh, so it is a different view. And we are just going to go back and open that ticket up again. So here we are again. And um, first of all, the ticket title, I want to point out, it says boss test ticket dash new user Herman Johnson. The ticket titles are fully customizable. In this case, I have it configured to prefix the title with this static value. And then this is actually pulled from the title field that the requester set up in the previous screen. So it has nothing to do with the fact that the field was named title. I just happened to pull against this field to populate this. And Boss Desk is riddled with this sort of flexibility. Uh, down here in the uh, description, you'll see there's the title, the description, and the attached files. And then you've got a list of all of the fields that were filled out. And again, we checked user account and mailbox and mobile phone. Okay. Uh, before we go any farther over here, I want to take you down the side column very briefly. Uh, general information, uh, the ticket has been assigned. That means it's, it's in the system and it's actually assigned to an agent. 
um, the source that came in through the portal. There's no due date. Uh, it's not linked to any problem or change tickets. Uh, and uh, there are currently no watchers. By default, it's important to know that in Boss Desk, uh, you can set up security on tickets very efficiently. And, and by default, in my environment, the only people who can see a ticket are the requester, the uh, person assigned to the ticket, and their team. And it, it, there's a global setting that we have turned on right now that allows all of the managers to see any tickets their subordinates submit. So in our case, and this doesn't have to be your case, but in our case, all of the managers of the requesters can also see these tickets. Pretty much that's it. But there are additional ways to rope people in. One of them is by adding someone as a watcher. And I'm actually just going to add myself as a watcher. I know that seems counterintuitive, but I'll explain why in a moment. So the idea here is that uh, now I'm also a watcher on this. I'm actually a watcher, the requester, and the agent. The idea here is that a watcher can be anyone. It can be an agent, it can be an end user. And anyone who's a watcher can see the ticket through their portal. And they're also included on all email correspondence that is posted to the ticket, or I should say all non-hidden uh, correspondence. So for example, if I go down here and I say, this is a comment and I post, now this comment is part of the ticket thread and anyone who's a watcher, a requester or uh, the uh, agent is going to receive an email saying that there's a comment. And But on the other hand, if I say this is a hidden comment, I post a uh, private comment, I'm sorry. Uh, you'll see there's a little icon here, not visible to the requester. Not only is this comment not going to appear when the requester views this ticket in their end user view, but nobody would have received an email notification as a result of that hidden comment. One more thing. Um, it's important to note that one of the ways, uh, Boss Desk uses what I like to call common sense logic, where it, it simply operates the way you would expect it to in any given situation. So for example, I posted uh, a comment here, a regular comment. I did not get an email notification. And the reason I didn't get it is because Boss Desk knows that I'm the person who made the comment. There's no reason to inform me the comment was posted. Uh, likewise, let's say somebody else came in here and posted a comment. I'm in here as a watcher, I'm in here as the requester, and I'm in here as an agent. Any one of these three things will trigger an email notification to me, but I'm only gonna get one email notification from Boss Desk. Again, it's smart enough to know I don't need to get three different notifications just because I happen to fit all of those three criteria. Systems I've worked with in the past have gotten tripped up in these sorts of things and you'd get to either loads of emails or none at all. So Boss Desk is, is very good about this. In addition to uh, adding someone as a watcher and giving them the visibility, you have the ability to uh, create what are called tasks, uh, which are here. And uh, if you assign a task to one of your agents, they will all also automatically get visibility into the ticket. And also there are what are called approvals. You can send an approval. Maybe uh, somebody is putting in a request for a new you know, monitor or something, and you want to get approval from their manager, or they want access to a system, and there's a group of people who maintain that system. You can either send a request for approval directly to someone, like their manager, or you can send it to an entire approval board, which again is a group of people responsible for systems. Those people will receive an email, they'll be able to approve or decline the request from the email, and then it'll go in here as part of the official record. But the important thing to remember is that the moment you send an approval request out, the target of that approval request has visibility to the ticket. So again, Boss Disk is giving visibility as needed, so they have a context for making a decision. And again, other systems I've worked with, um, you could add someone as a watcher and they'd get emails, but they wouldn't be able to see the ticket. Things just work the way that you would expect them to work here. Okay. Uh, very briefly, uh, requester information. This is the person who submitted the ticket and all of this info is pulled in from Active Directory in my case. And then you have your details. Category, uh, this is the type of ticket it is. And in our environment, we have pretty much one-to-one -one relationships. We have human resource tickets. They go to human resources. IT support tickets go to IT support. You don't have to do it that way. The important thing to understand is that the category is what determines who has visibility to the ticket on the agent side. You know, what teams. So right now, an IT support ticket is visible to the IT support team and our website services team. But if this was a human resources category, only the human resources team would be able to get to it. Um, then the agent is the person it's assigned to. Priority is simply a priority scale. You can customize this. We have a very simple scale in place. And then extended status, we're gonna come back to this shortly. This is incredibly useful. Basically determines like the sub state of the ticket itself. 
There can also be a due date. Um, and uh, one other thing, uh, before I forget, going back to the tune of, of things that have helped save us a lot of time and effort, you have what are called canned responses, which you can pre-configure. Uh, so let's say this is a request for a new user account. I set up the account. I can go in here and say, hey, it's a, uh, an account creation standard. And all this text just gets dumped right into the ticket itself. And previously, I would have to type all this in manually. I cannot tell you how many times I mistyped a password. By the way, this is not the password we use. Uh, but I would mistype passwords. I would maybe get an email address slightly incorrect or something like that. Or I'd forget to include some detail. Here, I can include everything at a glance. It's all there. They always know that their password is to change at first login. They have connectivity information for the mail server from a mobile device. It's all just there. Maybe it's a little more complicated. Maybe it's a customer service rep. So now I can choose this one instead. All the same info, but now we have a bunch of telephony information. So you get the point. This is a way to simply and easily dump a lot of predefined text, formatted text into a ticket for the end user. With just a few minor tweaks, you can get it ready for them. Uh, maybe they're asking that their password be reset. Well, hey, here's your new password, has to be changed on next login, apply, close, and you're done. This saves, it seems like a minor thing, but this saves us so much time. Okay, um, one more thing before I jump into tasks, which is going to lead us into the, uh, the routing rules. I want to draw your attention to this little fly out here. Anytime you run a query in Boss Desk, whether it's tickets, whether it's an inventory query, whether it's a user query, you'll get this little fly out. And what it allows you to do is see all of the other tickets that also matched that query. So you run a query, you click on one of the tickets, that's the ticket that opens. But now you can jump back and forth between all these other tickets very easily without having to leave the ticket, go back into your query, open a new one. Uh, this is another great little thing that's been thought out very nicely. You can also search because sometimes these go on and on and on. And finally, if we go into the tickets view itself, the default view, as you're seeing here, it's, it's kind of a stacked view. And this may seem odd at first glance, but this works very well on mobile devices. So instead of just seeing the ticket number in this field, you have the number, the title, the priority, the tasks, all of that in one column. Now, me personally, I actually like having a one-to-one -one column and in information. So I have a custom query here called My Open Tickets. And now you can see everything kind of fits in its own spot. But you don't have to use this. Uh, this is all highly customizable. Queries don't just determine what you see, but what columns are included and how they are displayed. One more thing. Uh, you can make bulk changes to tickets. I can select multiple tickets here. I'm selecting the yellow ones because those are in are my team tickets. They're IT support tickets. I can go over here and I can say bulk delete, bulk close, bulk edit, meaning that I can post a single comment to multiple tickets at one time, change the status, the priority, the type, reassign them, all these different things. I can add tags to them if they're you know, special types of tickets that I want to track. All of this can be done in a single shot instead of having to open up all these tickets manually. And again, time saving is what that is. Okay. We're going to go back into that ticket that we had open a moment ago. And we're going to go into the tasks. The reason I want to zoom in on these is that uh, tasks, again, they're a way to take a ticket and kind of divide up the work into multiple people. This, in particular, is a great example of what are called routing rules. What you saw me do a few minutes ago was go into the form, fill it out, and hit submit. And then, boom, we're over here at the actual ticket itself. But what you didn't see were a series of rules that fired off in between those two events. And I have one rule that just takes every ticket that comes into my system and gives it a priority of medium and an E status of logged. Another rule determined what form was used to fill out the ticket. And based on that, it gave it the category of the team and assigned the ticket to me. There are additional rules that I, that I had in place that were watching these fields. And as soon as they were clicked or checked, um, those two rules each created a unique task that were hung off the ticket. So in just a few clicks, we have automated a great deal of information here. And, and you can do so much more. I'll show that momentarily. But here you can see that we have two different tasks. They were both assigned to my team, to me. They wouldn't have to go to me. Uh, the, the first one's due in a day. The third one's due in three days. The type is general. And I could have added notes. I, I chose not to. All of this was handled automatically. And what you didn't see was I got notifications for these in the background as well. So I, I didn't just get, a, hey, there's a new ticket. Hey, you've been assigned a task. Also, you can create child tasks. 
those child tasks basically remain inert until the parent task is completed, at which point the owner or the, the agent assigned to those child tasks uh, gets a notification saying, okay, this task has been assigned to you. They're notified at the moment it becomes relevant. And then they can come in here and they can complete it. So um, to really explain what happened here, I want to go into the routing rules. And my routing rules are right here. There's quite a few, but you don't let that get to you. These can be equated to Outlook rules. They're processed top to bottom. Multiple rules can fire off depending on criteria. And right off the bat, you'll see here's that first rule I mentioned that sets the status to log and priority to medium for every ticket that comes in. And if I click edit, you can see it's very simple. Uh, th there's actually no criteria, so it, it matches all the tickets. And then set the extended status to log and then priority to medium. Simple as that. Then it moves on to the next rule. Um, in IT support, we set the category to IT support. The ticket goes to the IT support team. And we don't assign the, uh, the ticket directly to an agent. Instead, we send a pre-fabricated email, something we designed, to the agent who's on call. That's just how our team prefers to work. But you'll notice that human resources, office maintenance, and RAM support, they do it differently. They assign the category of the team, and then they assign the ticket directly to individuals. Restaurant maintenance works a little differently too. They have a category and a team. They don't assign the ticket at all, but they assign all members of their team as watchers. The point that I'm trying to make here is that you can streamline, you can customize the experience on a team by team basis. It doesn't have to be a one size fits all. You don't have to shoehorn all your teams into a single experience. You can have, you can cater to the needs of the individual teams. In the case of this boss desk uh, uh, webinar ticket, we basically said, hey, the service request came in using this form. That's what this means. Set the category to IT support tickets, the team to IT support, and the agent to me. But we could have looked at a bunch of other conditions. We could have looked for keywords in the title. We could have looked at, hey, it was created inside or outside of business hours. Uh, it was submitted by a specific individual. Uh, we can actually look at fields inside the form and take actions on, on that, uh, which is what you'll see in a moment. We can say, hey, if mobile phone is true or false, do these things. And then the actions that you can take are very varied as well. You can uh, assign it to a team or an agent. You can email people, uh, email template emails off to people, set the priority, the extended status. Uh, you can post comments, um, add tags or tasks or watchers. You can close or delete the tickets. There is a ton of flexibility when you consider all the different avenues here, all the different criteria that can you know hit on any given ticket. And likewise, down here, if we see set up mobile phone, you'll see that, uh, yes, we are looking at that field. And if it's true, create this task. This is the title, goes to me, it has a due date of three days. You know, we can add notes, pretty straightforward stuff, but it is enormously powerful. Uh, very similar. I want to talk about monitors and I'm not going to go into all the details here, but I want to give you a practical example. Monitors more than anything have made my life easy. And the reason for that is that monitors are similar to routing rules, but instead of firing off at the moment that a ticket is submitted, they fire off in the background the moment a ticket meets a predefined criteria. So for example, let's go back into my ticket here again. Let's say, you know, I need something. I need something from the requester. The, the manager who put in the request, I forgot to include the paperwork. Hey, I need paperwork. Please send it over and I will process. Okay, so I post that, he gets the notification. Well, in the past, what I would do next is say, um, I'm sorry, waiting on user, and I would update it. And then I would wait. And a few days later, when it crosses my mind again, I'd, I'd post another comment. Maybe I would just copy the same one in again. Hey, here's your reminder. And then I'd wait some more. And so on and so forth. And, and sometimes I'd forget, sometimes the comments would be different. Sometimes I'd wait two days instead of five days or five days instead of two. And it was just all over the place. And most importantly, I would have to, you know, constantly nag the person. We used monitors to create a couple of e-statuses. So for example, one that I use all the time is called waiting on user, close after seven days. I put it into here, I hit update, and I don't have to worry about it again. Because what happens is there are two monitors that run in the background. The first one says, after the ticket's been in the status for six days, and I mean six days from the moment I put it in the status, send an email to the user. Say, hey, this has been waiting for six days. Please update it. If you don't, it's going to be closed in 24 hours. Now, if the user responds and they post a comment, this will actually change to updated by user and the, the timer kind of just resets. 
And at plus, if I have any queries that are, that are based off this or any widgets on my dashboard, I can see that a ticket jumped into that you know, uh, query immediately and now it's the ball's in my court. But if they don't respond, then when it hits seven days, 24 hours after the first notification, they get a second notification saying, hey, the ticket's gonna be closed. Little, little courtesy email, the ticket's gonna be closed. If you wanna reopen it, here's the link. And then the system closes the ticket. The point is, I can just set this and I don't have to worry about it again. The user experiences the same behavior every time, the same waiting periods, the same notifications, the same reminders. I don't have to think about it. This is just a variation of it. And Resolved is another one that we set up where if, if we're closing something or we've done something for a user, but we're not 100% sure we got it right, we may put it into Resolved. And if they don't you know, post anything after two days, it'll automatically close. So that's the idea behind monitors. And again, these are, these are tremendously useful, help you automate all sorts of things. Um, I know I'm running up on time here, but I want to take you through the scheduler very briefly. Uh, if you're anything like me, you have some tasks that you, you may perform once a year. You may perform once a month. And uh, if you want to remember to do them, you have to go into your Outlook calendar and set up a reminder. Well, not anymore. Uh, a great example is every December, I have to set up all of the next year's call center holidays in my phone system. So instead of putting this into Outlook like I used to, now I have a uh, scheduler entry here. And if you look at this, it basically says every December 15th at 10 a.m., create a ticket. It actually makes me the requester. I put that in, assign it to me. The title is scheduled next year's call center holidays. And then I have a bunch of information in here. These are the holidays I have to worry about. So every December, I get a ticket automatically. I don't have to remember. It, the system just sends it out automatically. And now I process it like any other ticket. So I love this feature. I haven't used it too much. As you can see, there aren't too many entries. You can also put reports to fire off automatically on a monthly basis or whatever you want. So this is great. Last of all, I want to talk about the knowledge base. And knowledge bases are not uncommon. But what is uncommon, in my opinion, are, are, are two things. Uh, the content that you can store in individual articles and the security surrounding those articles. For example, I've worked with systems where you post an article and it can be visible to your entire user community, agents and requesters or agents and end users. Or you can make it visible just to end users or just to agents and that's it. But you cannot get any more fine tuned than that. With Boss Desk, uh, you can choose any subset of users. Doesn't matter if they're agents or users or half and half, you can make any article visible to any group or individual user you want. And keep in mind, this, this talks to Active Directory, so you can use Active Directory groups to govern this. A great example is I have drivers out on, you know, out on the road, day in and day out. They don't care about articles pertaining to things like plant equipment, but they care a lot about articles pertaining to their handhelds that we issue to them, errors that might appear, how to solve problems. And uh, likewise, people in the plant, they don't care about those handhelds. They care about plant equipment. So we can really offer a different experience to everyone who comes in here. Um, second of all, and, and there is a nice uh, search feature uh, built in here. I'm going to search for webinar. I, I have uh, created an article here. Some uh, systems that I've used, you're very limited. In, in fact, one that we used recently, it, it offered normal, bold, italicized, and underlined text or any combination, but that's it. Here you have a variety of fonts, font sizes, font and background colors, font styles, including code and headers, bulleted lists, numbered lists, photos, and you can even embed videos. This is fantastic if you have a video, say, on YouTube for, for some maintenance procedure that you want to log, but you don't want to have to reinvent it. So this is a wonderful, wonderful system. And last of all, I want to draw your attention to one more thing. We're going back into the articles, but we're going in from the, the agent view. So this is where the articles are composed. My articles follow a very rigid, rigid standard. So for example, I have, um, uh, I have a series of templates set up down at the bottom. We'll go into a troubleshooting template. I have an overview, a cause, a resolution, notes, and tags. And I want all of my troubleshooting articles to follow this standard. Well, it used to be if I wanted to compose a new article, I'd have to open one of these, go in here, copy, go back to articles, compose a new article, and paste it in. And it's not that that was that hard to do, but it didn't have to be that hard. So Boss Desk offers a way to contact their support teams. You know, I, I've noticed a bug or I want a new feature directly from inside the application itself. And I'm not going to go through it here, but suffice to say, I went through this process. And I said, you know what would be great is if you could just copy articles. And what do you know? 
a few weeks later, they added a copy feature. So now I can just copy an article and all of the existing text and contents and everything are put in here. All I have to do is give it a new title, decide who's going to see it, and uh, make sure it's in a published state, and I'm good to go. So this is a great example of something that not only works very well, but it's an example of Boss Desk listening to me as a customer and then taking action based on uh, my recommendation. So uh, that is uh, pretty much all that I have to go over. Um, so I will go ahead now and uh, pass this over to Chris. All righty. So thank you very much, Bob. And uh, Bob did an excellent job of covering some of the, uh, of covering very in depth on the features that his organization uses for the uh, uses for the boss test system. So what I'd like to do is um, <clears throat> is I'd like to go through and uh, view some of the other functionalities that are possible within the boss desk system. Um, so what you're looking at right now is the uh, is the technician dashboard. So every technician has the ability to build their own dashboard in the system. Um, by selecting metrics and widgets from this list here, and they can customize their dashboard by dragging and dropping, um, or by going through and edit, and by going through and creating their own widgets where they can show whatever metrics that they feel are important. So, um, in addition, uh, what Bob went over was the use of the service catalogs in his system. Now, some of you may have been looking at those forms and saying that, okay, those forms look great, but do I have to know how to code? Do I have to know some HTML or information like that in order to uh, build those forms? Well, the answer is no. The forms are actually extremely easy to build. Um, so if we go in here to settings, so, uh, service catalog, and want to look at a simple form, um, for instance, we'll go ahead and call this uh, the new webinar form. We can come in here and uh, mark it as enabled. And then if I want to build this, for instance, setting up a form. Uh, and setting up a form for the webinar. So we can go through and create, uh, we can go through and create visibility settings such that only certain groups can cre uh, can fill out these forms. We can set it to agents only if you want your agents to fill it out. Um, and then as for the form itself, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping. So I just pick what kind of field I want, whether that be a single line text for title, um, or whether that be a drop down list for the field uh, for some sort of itemized inch, if for some sort of itemized item, you can go through and add additional items. And then you can build out these forms exactly the way you want them. Additionally, you can control their size and choose whether they are mandatory or optional. So these are very customizable and very rearrangeable. You can also set up the title templates, as Bob mentioned, to draw information from these specific fields and insert it into the title of all of the tickets that are created. All right, so that's how we create the forms. Bob actually went very in uh, went very in depth into how to create the routing rules and the workflows. Um, so that's most of what I want to cover in that side of the help desk. However, I do want to bring your attention to the um, availability of an end user portal. So within the system, your end users actually get access to a simplified portal, which they can go into and view their currently pending tickets. Um, as well as um, comment on them as needed. Uh, they, if they are a watcher, as Bob showed, they can view their currently um, watched tickets. If they are an approver, they can view their currently pending approvals and approve or deny them right through the system. 
uh, they can access the service catalog and fill out those forms as needed, and they can access the knowledge base, which Bob was very thorough in explaining exactly the, pro, uh, exactly the pros and usages of the knowledge base to help your users. So let's go ahead and switch back to the agent view. And there's one more item I'd like to cover before we jump into the other portion of the system, which is the asset management. And that is when you're creating the tickets and the workflows, adi um, additionally, you may want to create SLAs. SLA stands for service level agreement, and it essentially lets you define based on the priorities of the tickets, how much time your techs have to respond to the tickets. So you can set up an SLA for tickets, which automatically sets the due date for the tickets uh, and based on the priority of the ticket itself. You can additionally set up reminders to remind your technicians uh, when those tickets are coming close to being due or remind them when they are due as well. You can also customize those SLAs so that they only apply to certain classes of tickets. And then you can modify those SLAs by using your business hours and holiday calendars so that those will only expire within working hours. Once you close a ticket, you can also send out satisfaction surveys in the system. Uh, you can customize how frequently those go out as well as you get a drag and drop interface in order to um, customize the questions that you ask. So you can add or remove questions and customize them with drag and drop. Um, and then you can go in and <clears throat> review a report of all of those surveys as well in the reports section. So that's, the, um, that's some of the other features that you have available in the help desk. Let's go ahead and jump into the asset management. So with the asset management, the first thing you'd wanna know is how do we import assets into the system? Um, the most common way that people import assets into the system is via the Active Directory. So if you have an existing Active Directory, we can actually link Active Directory to the system and automatically import all of those assets into the system. From there, any of your Windows machines, you can automatically run WMI scans to get the hardware and software information and keep all of that information on file. We also automatically detect users provisioned on those devices so that when you get a ticket about a specific device, you can actually go ahead and look at which user has that device, or alternatively, if you get a ticket from a user saying that my computer isn't working and they didn't specify which computer, you actually can go and look which computer that user has. We also um, detect all the software that's running on all of your machines via that WMI scan, which means you can run reports and utilization um, charts on which machines are running which software and how many machines are running a specific software. We also allow you to track contracts in the system, um, which can be used for third-party maintenance contracts, and those can be associated with assets as well. Um, now, your other options for importing uh, assets, because Active Directory isn't the only way, uh, we can also scan in assets via barcode because we do have a mobile app for your technicians. And uh, with that mobile app, you can scan a barcode for like a serial number or other or control number in order to automatically enter that number into the system um, and create an asset based off of that identifier number. Alternatively, you can scan existing assets and run reports on which machines uh, have been scanned in the last inventory sweep. So you can see which machines you have versus which machines are supposed to be in a specific location. Um, so in addition to the barcode based inventory, we can also import assets from other databases as long as you can get the assets into a uh, spreadsheet compatible format. The most common one we use is CSV. We can import assets that way as well. And then finally, we allow for manual entry of, of assets. We also can track contracts, uh, as I mentioned before, and third-party maintenance contracts, but we can also keep your vendors on file as well. So we can come in and keep track of multiple contacts at multiple vendors uh, in case you need to reach out to them to place an order. And then once you place an order, you can actually track those purchase orders in the system and you have the ability to mark what you're buying and how many 
and then automatically generate assets in the system based on those purchase orders when you mark it as received. So once we've done all of that, we can essentially build an entire workflow from purchase request to purchase order, to purchasing the asset, to provisioning the asset, and finally to deploying the asset all within the system. And then those purchase orders can be linked back to the original tickets as well. Additionally, we allow for um, storage of quick use scripts in the system, which are called remote tools. You can store anything that you can do in a command line in the system to execute at any time. Uh, and that can be used in order to do things like open an RDP session in the system, uh, deploy a software, um, pull logs from a machine. The, uh, the uses are really endless uh, and, is, and is limited only by your knowledge of batch scripting. So that can all be done directly from the web portal as well. Uh, we also track every change that is made to a ticket over its life cycle. So we've essentially got a history of the life cycle of each of your assets. And uh, the final thing I want to touch on is warranty uh, tracking. So we can run reports on which machines have which warranty. If they have a Dell or Lenovo warranty, we can actually integrate with those um, warranty databases and collect all of that warranty information for those specific devices. You can run reports on which devices are coming up for expiration so that you know when you need to replace devices as well. Um, there are of course more, there is of course more functionality in the system that can be, uh, that can be applied to different situations, but that is the, but that is the overview of the boss system. All right. So that is most of what I have. Uh, I think I will go ahead and pass it back over to open up for questions. Great, thank you so much, Chris. So um, now we are going to get to some questions that we have. Um, this one is for Bob. Bob, what was the biggest problem you had to overcome when you were implementing uh, boss desk? Uh, I think that the biggest problem um, <laughs> up front before we implemented it was getting uh, buy-in from the different teams. Uh, but that was purely because the system that we had before boss desk left a very bad taste in everyone's mouth. And so people were very leery about it up front. And uh, so, and, and thankfully it took very little effort to get to this point. But one of my, my first concerns up front was whether or not boss desk would, you know, shine enough as it were to uh, convince the different support teams that yes, this is a good solution. And uh, as it turns out that that not only happened, but it happened very quickly uh, and, and across many more teams than I had expected it to. Okay, and um, and it was asked, how um, long did it take you to implement what you have shown us? Um, it, in total, I would say about two weeks. Um, most of it was done inside of a single week. Uh, as I had mentioned, our previous system, it, it took us almost a year. And, and it required that everything, every trigger, every action, every email notification be coded uh, in HTML in some cases. Um, it was a tremendous amount of work. Getting the inventory in uh, required third-party scripting and, and all sorts of extra things. Uh, with Boss Desk, um, we had all of the ticketing, 100% the of it, again, the email notifications, all the forms, all the routing rules, all of the um, the different support teams and agents and determining who could see what, all of that was done in four to five days. And then we started to populate the knowledge base and automatic, oh, and it also included the Active Directory connection. So pulling in all of our Active Directory users inside of four or five days. The second week was, uh, you know, building out, beginning to build out the knowledge base. It's an ongoing process. Uh, and also uh, getting the hardware and software inventory scanned. So very, very short turnaround time by comparison. Oh, thanks, Bob. Um, next question would be, um, how did management at Oberwise um, react to the 
changes that you've done? Uh, the, the, the changes, it's been a very overwhelmingly positive reaction. Um, and as I mentioned, um, Boss Desk was kind of coming in in a bad situation where the previous system had had left people kind of leery. Uh, basically, only the IT support team was using it. None of the other teams really wanted to use it. None of the management wanted their teams to rely upon it uh, just because it had too many drawbacks. And with uh, Boss Desk, once we showed what it could do, um, it, it, pretty much, I mean, I, 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 I hate to sound like I'm, I'm you know, painting it too rosy, but the truth is every single support team that resisted the previous solution embraced this one. And a big part of that was the fact that every team's experience could be so different from the next team's experience. Um, in addition to that, uh, because we don't just use forms to uh, process support tickets, we use them to process paperwork that used to be physical, or we use it to you know, create logs of customer complaints and things like that. We've been able to broaden the application in our environment from just break fix to you know, information tracking and um, you know, request processing, things like that, things that might go through HR. And as a result of that, we've had a much greater buy-in uh, across the leadership team. Okay, um, thank you, Bob. Um, the next question is, if you had it to do all over again, what would you have done differently? Uh, the only thing that I think I, I would have done differently in retrospect is I would have embraced the, the routing rules much earlier on. Um, when we first went live with Boss Desk, yes, we did have a bunch of different support teams and different techs and different forms. But in all honesty, a lot of the forms, they looked very similar. Um, a lot of the rules that fired off once tickets were created, they did a lot of the same thing. It took me a while to realize the, the value in those routing rules and, and really what you could do with them. And if I had realized up front just how powerful that part of the system was, I definitely would have implemented those from day one and avoided some of those initial um, you know, bumps in the road that you're gonna face anytime you're rolling out a new system and getting new techs and teams to, uh, you know, to jump on board. The, the, they adopted it, but they would have adopted it more quickly, I think, if I had been aware of that and I had really played to the strengths of the routing rules. Okay, great. I think we have time for one last question. If we do not get to your questions um, on this call, we will be reaching out to you afterwards. Um, for the last question, um, Bob, do you have any future plans for achieving um, uh, other improvement um, and expanding it um, across the organization? Um, the, uh, the, the two areas that I'll speak to there are, we, we, while, while it is true that we are sucking in our, our hardware and software inventory, we haven't really you know, jumped on that as much as, as I would like to have uh, at this point. And that's, that's totally on us. Something that I really want to um, focus on going forward is, is using Boss Desk to manage our inventory um, kind of like uh, what, what Chris was saying, as far as, you know, tracking things like warranty information and really building reports out and, and things like that. Um, we know it's there, we just haven't leveraged it yet. Beyond that, uh, kind of one of our ongoing processes is to, again, take internal processes like paperwork, like requests, like customer complaints, things that aren't necessarily break fix and roll as many of those as possible into our forms, and into you know the the rules that govern who gets roped in, who gets notified, things like that. There's a lot of potential in our company for that sort of growth, and um, that's something that we're always uh, always working to develop. Great, thank you so much, Bob. That was a really great presentation. Um, so now I'd like to go ahead and um, announce the winners. Um, we have two $50 Amazon gift cards. Uh, the first one goes to Julie Walker at American Vision Partners. And the second goes to Vincent Chu at the University of California, Los Angeles. 
Thank you all so much for joining today. And um, like I said, if we did not get to your questions, we will be reaching out to answer those for you. And uh, you can also contact us at sales at bosssolutions.com. And don't forget uh, that we will be sending out a very short survey at the very end, um, very short. We appreciate your feedback and it helps us to continue bringing you content that you really want to see in the future. And again, thank you so much, Bob. Thank you, Chris. And everyone have a wonderful afternoon.